Hey, thanks for joining me today. This is Pastor Lafayette. We're in Acts chapter 4, reading out of the New King James Version of the Bible. So let's get started today. Verse 1, Peter and John, uh, by the way, <clears throat> so we didn't get started, did we? It's a fake start. Peter and John, though, uh, have healed a man as they were entering the temple, the hour of prayer, going to uh, spend some time praying. It's caused a tremendous uproar, and now they've been talking to the people about why this person was healed, uh, talking about Jesus. Now we're in Acts chapter 4, verse 1. <clears throat> now, as they spoke to the people, the priest, the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them, being greatly disturbed that they taught the people and preached in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them, and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. I understand this has uh, become a religious thing, and because this uh, government killed Jesus, this has become a really big deal. It's the name of Jesus now that is causing some problems here. It's not necessarily the resurrection from the dead, because the Pharisees believed in the resurrection from the dead. But they're talking about Jesus. Jesus and the resurrection, Jesus and healing, Jesus and this, Jesus and that. <clears throat> it says, verse 4, However, many of those who heard the word believed, and the number of the men came to be about 5,000. So through their testimony, and through all that they're saying, 5,000 men have come to believe. Verse 5, it came to pass on the next day that their rulers, elders, and scribes, as well as Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the family of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? Get ready, because they asked a question. Peter, excuse me, Verse 8, Peter, <clears throat> filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, <clears throat> excuse me, by him this man stands here before you whole. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, but has become the chief cornerstone. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. They asked for it, <coughs> and they got it, and Peter tells them that you guys crucified Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Jesus being his name, Christ being a messianic name, Nazareth being the place where he was, uh, the place where he was raised or the place that he's from. His family's from Nazareth. So no doubt here what they're talking about. No doubt here who Peter's referring to. You crucified him. God raised him from the dead. You rejected him, and now he's become the chief cornerstone. Think there's a little bit of conviction in that? You think he's saying a few things that might make a few people mad? Like, what are you, you're blaming us? You're, you're, you're judging us? We're judging you. Who do you think you are? <clears throat> and then he goes on to say, because he knows they have a problem with the name of Jesus. There is salvation in no other name. Because this is the only name that men have given through, who, through, who, through whose salvation comes. This is, is an amazing statement right here. <clears throat> because I think sometimes we're willing to water it down a bit. Or we're willing to maybe you know, use the God reference a few more times. My friend Peter had no problem with using Jesus as the Messiah 
raised from the dead, the chief cornerstone, no one can get saved <clears throat> but by that name of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. My friend, I think we need to get back to preaching the name of Jesus and that there is no other religion and there is salvation in no other name, no other religion that uses any other name, any other means, any other way is worth it. It is invalid. It cannot produce salvation. Only can salvation come <clears throat> through the name of Jesus. Peter and John recognize the value and the power of this name. The church needs to recognize the value and the power of the name of Jesus. My friend, don't cower. Don't whimper. It's through this name that deliverance comes. Jesus. Father, help us <clears throat> to again, Lord, if we've, if we've backed off a little bit, if we've tried to be a little more um, politically correct or try to be a little more sensitive for those who maybe they will believe in a God, but they don't maybe believe in Jesus like we do. Father, for, help us to forget that and preach the name of Jesus and quit worrying about what people will think. Help us to be bold in our proclamation, proclamation and our declaration that Jesus is the only way to salvation. In that holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for joining me today. Bye-bye.